Hi, everybody. I love that music. I swear. <laughs> it just makes me want to dance. It's so up and upbeat. And uh, <laughs> that's an Arthur special. So many, many thanks, Dan, for letting me use it. And um, thank y'all. We're doing this uh, a week early than normally we do the second Monday of the month. But Mel is, is abandoning us for Slovakia <laughs> this week. So he won't be here next week. So we're going to, we're meeting early and uh, we're going to cover some questions and talk about some stuff going on. And uh, I guess the biggest question on everybody's mind is who is Kamala going to pick? Ooh. <laughs> any, any thoughts? Hits? I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah. <laughs> whoever I have picked, a hand whoever with... is picked is not going to hurt. Put it that way. I, yeah. I still think it's a toss up probably between Shapiro, uh, Bashir, and Buddha Judge. Uh, as much as I'd like for it to be Bashir because I'm from Kentucky originally, right. um, I don't know if she'll want to pull him out of a governorship of a southern state. Yeah, you know, because he could influence the voting in that state. I mean, legally influence it. I just got my hair cut too. So, <laughs> uh, what's left of it? You look beautiful, Mel. Oh, you look beautiful. You. That'll get you everywhere. But, <laughs> uh, but anyway, I think um, then I think she had in mind, um, you know, like I said, Bashir. I've watched Buddha Judge, and he's fact, 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 fact. You know, I think he would be formidable, and I think uh, he'd be a really good pick. But I still am thinking Shapiro. I could be wrong, but I wrote down Shapiro. Isn't he in a swing state? He's in Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. Okay. But he could he could bring Pennsylvania home to Kamala. Uh, so... I, wasn't she going to announce it today or tomorrow or something? Uh, it's tomorrow. tomorrow. I think it's going to be today, but they're saying it's going to be in Philadelphia tomorrow. Well, if it's in Philadelphia tomorrow, then it's probably a good possibility that it's Shapiro. Sure. Of course, I'm not banking it on that, but I still feel a little. I, I've got a funny feeling, and I could be wrong. You know, I think it was really hard for her. I think she was having a difficult time making up her mind. Is it? Is it Bashir? Is it Kelly? Is it? You know, Buddha Judge is it Shapiro? But my feeling is, and I think others will agree with me. Hopefully, that behind closed doors, she's going to offer Buddha Judge a high level position. But yeah. you know, years yeah. ago, I saw him as vice president, so that mm -hmm. might have been what was throwing me off on this one. There's but Tim, I, still Tim Walls is in the in, in the mix as well. Right, but I wrote. I like him. I'd never even heard of him until the other day when somebody mentioned him, and I was like, "Who the hell is that?" And I had to go look it up on on YouTube, and I caught a couple of his videos, and I was like, "Oh, I kind of like this guy. <laughs> He's pretty." But cool. I wrote down Shapiro's name. Yeah, most people are feeling Shapiro. I'm I'm just not going to go on record because I don't know. <laughs> I have just I have been drawing a blank every time I've drawn on it or tried to just. Focus in and say, okay, give me a hint. No, nothing. I keep thinking it's I keep dropping cards too. I keep thinking it's between Shapiro and Bashir. Those are the two that I just keep seeing on it. You know, it's um my original hit was Bashir. That's what I felt first, but you never know. Yeah, I could be yeah. wrong, but I don't know. Anyway. But well, I know way. Colleen it's said so that windy. astrologically, Colleen, the cool crone, uh, she did their charts, all of the VP mm -hmm. possibles, their charts. And she said that Kamala and Bashir, like hand in glove, they matched perfectly on their charts. Well, so who, as much as I'd like um, to think it's Bashir, I mean, I, I'm pushing for Buddha Judge, I, you know, because he just fact, fact, fact. I know. But, you know, I yeah, think he's awesome. And a lot of times what can happen as psychics, I think we can hook in telepathically that thought transference and read the energy of what she might be thinking, blah, blah, blah. But I, you know what? I could be wrong. I could be dead wrong, but I wrote Shapiro. Okay. 
I also agree with you that Buttigieg will be in a, a um, more than just transportation. In the next oh, yeah. Administration. I mean, I oh, would yeah. love to see him as He's, vice president. <laughs> I love to see, yeah. I have a I, feeling Secretary of State. State. Yeah, that's what I keep getting, which that would be awesome because he would be so good at that. Um, he just doesn't take any BS off of anybody, you know. That's what I love about him. He's but as well, Mel said, he has the facts behind him. He, right, but he does it in such a charming way. <laughs> it's just well, he has I, a way of putting them down, and he just makes them smile while he's doing it. And it, it takes them a minute to realize, oh, he just dissed me. Wait a minute. But one thing is for sure, they're all going to be out there campaigning their hearts out for. Mm -hmm. um, oh yeah. Common. Without a doubt. Without I asked a doubt. about real quick what's going to happen to Trump, and look what I pulled. I asked if he would win. I asked if Trump would win. <laughs> justice. Trump will get his justice. justice in other words. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, because now they've just. Um, who was it? Um, something else came out. Chutkin was that the one that they just gave the case to? Yes, well, and, she already, right. and she already denied his. His yeah. have the case dismissed. Yeah. So. <laughs> sure, I had a 16 page note for that one on, right. she, on Saturday. She's going to be totally no nonsense, no mm -hmm. nonsense whatsoever. And I kind of watched some of his speeches, you know, this last one where people were walking out. It was so disjointed. I mean, it was like, whoa. It, I, I can't watch them anymore. I just can't do it. I can't. If I turn the sound off, I can usually handle a few minutes, but if I can hear him, no. I pulled another <laughs> clip on him just for grins and giggles, and I got the magician. Mm -hmm. And then I heard in my head, my psychic head, the magician's tricks will be revealed. <laughs> oh, there we go. Let's see here. Well, him denying the whole thing. I don't know anything about 2025. 20, I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, please. Come on. Well, we know that. You know, every every adjective he calls somebody else is exactly what he is. Who he is. Now he's saying, you know, lying Kamala because, well, she was Indian and now, now she's black and, you know. Got when did she turn black? And it's like, she's uh, she like, went She went to an all-black college, sir. Well. <laughs> Graduate that word class. I'm a psychic, <laughs> but now I'm white. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Cajun and now I'm white. Oh boy. <laughs> what difference does it make? What color oh, or what nationality somebody is? Exactly. Well, when someone's someone racist, that's when it matters. That is so Nazistic yeah. to be uh, that is so Nazistic to mm -hmm. even be having and for Trump to bring that, that up. Right. People need to really say that. That sounds like something from Nazi. Especially when he brought it up in front of the black. Um, well, he I did liked to die when I saw those clips. I thought, oh my God, well, I, when, when he they said, couldn't get him off the stage fast enough. They come across the border, they take black jobs. <laughs> and somebody said, what is a black job? <laughs> I know. That was so racist. The one well, that she's uh, running for. <laughs> he, he, called, he called Joe Biden Sleepy Joe. He called, he's the one falling asleep in court. Well, that's dozing Donald. Right. He called <laughs> I like that. Kamala a liar. How about this one? The three D's deceitful, deranged, dozing Donald. Don old. That's a good. That's good. Oh. Yeah. Oh, I like that. Don O L D. Don that's old. One. Well, alt in German means or diaper Don old. <laughs> Don old. I like that. We're going to respell his name. Yeah. Diaper go. time. Um, oh, I forgot diaper. Diaper deceitful. Yeah, as opposed to dabber. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's right. what I just said. Right. <laughs> this is drain the swamp. This is light and airy. Come on, let's keep it fun. I'm off, I'm off, my, uh, I'm off my rant. <laughs> okay, rant's over. Now let's have fun. Now. Um, let's see. I did have a question. Somebody, uh, Pegasus is asking, will Anthony Hopkins announce support for Kamala Harris? Especially since uh, he, uh, let's, 
no, that was something else she was talking about. But she asked, um, will Anthony Hopkins support Kamala Harris? Now, I don't know if she meant Anthony Hopkins or if she meant Robert De Niro. I think she meant Anthony <laughs> Hopkins because because Donald Trump is always talking about Hannibal Lecter and Anthony. Oh Hopkins. yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Don't forget, he also played Nixon. Wouldn't it be wild if he would come out and um, be Hannibal Lecter for Donald? <laughs> hey, Don, come over for dinner. That's exactly what I was thinking. Don't Hannibal you think Lecter that man probably Hannibal thought of Lecter. that? <laughs> Hannibal Lump. Hannibal Lump. I'm sorry. <laughs> Hannibal Lecter invites Donald Trump to dinner. Now that would be a good, or for dinner, invites him for dinner. Look who's coming to dinner, starring. I don't think Anthony Hopkins is going to do that. <laughs> no. no. Actually, there is a YouTube <clears throat> out there where somebody pretends to be Hannibal Lecter saying how disgraceful it was for Trump to even mention his name. <laughs> And he puts him from down. It's very funny. Oh my goodness. I got a question okay. here from uh, DJ9905. Will anything happen to Neil Gorsuch after appearing on Fox? What happened on Fox? Oh, I missed that. Oh, well, he was talking about he's he's hawking his book, and then he told basically was warning Biden not to not to mess around with the Supreme Court. I heard about that. He's got room to talk. And, you know, I don't think he did anything illegal by saying that. No. I'm not a lawyer, but I wouldn't think so. But uh, it just goes to show how some of these justices have already made up their minds. Yeah. And what I see coming in answer to that question is a SCOTUS that's going to be reformed. They're not going to be able to take money from people trying to get laws changed. They're not going to be able to take any gifts whatsoever. I see a whole code of ethics that will be made law. And if they break that code of ethics, then they can, they'll be prosecuted or could be. I see more justices added to the court. And I see justices on the court. And I see ethics coming to say that these justices can't go forward and talk about their political beliefs when it comes to cases or, or um, candidates. Mm -hmm. They have to not be able, it's not against freedom of speech. It's just that they're already showing they're prejudicial. And I see all of that changing. Well, it's just like during the, uh, during the State of the Union message, they're not allowed to applaud or clap or anything like that. They just have to sit there. Right. That's right. And stay away. <laughs> Which with some of them, it's kind of hard because you see them dozing off. <laughs> yeah. Well, I threw some cards on it. The first card I got was Kamala. Knight of Swords. She is coming for them. What Joe doesn't finish, she will. <laughs> She's going to be... Slicing and dicing and cutting them down. She's not wasting any time. But when it comes to the court, I see the three of swords. That's disappointment. They're not going to be happy. Followed by, what number is this? The nine of swords. <laughs> they're losing sleep over this because they're like, oh, my God. Our butt's in a sling, and now they're going to find out what it's like. To, to be held accountable, just like Trump and them are finding out what it's well, like. I see two of them out. under investigation and indicted. <laughs> Clarence Thomas is one, and I'm I'm probably thinking they'll find they'll investigate Alito. Um, mm -hmm. Gorsuch has the right to to speech to free speech, of course, but um, I don't know. Um, I think these six justices, or at least five of them. Uh, will go down as the absolute worst uh, Supreme Court justices and the most corrupt yeah. in the history of the United States. Clarence Thomas definitely will go down as one well, of They them. just found out that Clarence Thomas took an, they found another trip to New Zealand on a private jet, never claimed. Right. Yeah. yeah. Hey, what do you guys think about Jenna Ellis? I heard today briefly. Oh, yeah. 
that she flipped on him. Uh, she pleaded yeah, guilty. Buddy. <laughs> uh, she she flipped in in Georgia and in Arizona, mm -hmm. uh, and she also flipped on Meadows and Giuliani. Yep. Um, and they it's, offered her. They, I said they that they said they wouldn't prosecute her. Uh, they offered her like a deal. And I don't think, well, Trump's team's going to say that she did it because she was offered a deal of no prosecution, but uh, I think it'll be. <laughs> it's it's a queen for the day, you know, type of deal. Tell us everything. And Correct. It. It's, it's all good. And we will put you in jail. And they've been all, everybody's been offered that basically. And, you know, she's, <coughs> she sees the writing on the wall. Um, <laughs> yeah, boy, you know, there's going to be some more explosive. Well, stuff. the lovers reversed. <laughs> she done broke up with Donnie. A lot of more explosive Donnie. stuff coming out, I think. So good. <laughs> what was that? A lot more explosive stuff coming oh, yeah. out about T Rump. Well, I keep on reading that as we get to the end of August this month. I feel the two females are coming forward with the uh, um, Epstein stuff. That's going to, wow. that's going, and one of them maybe, one, the guys keep on saying one of them may be a known person or slightly known. So it won't be like a shock, it'll be a shock to everybody, but they've got the receipts. So, and then on the 18th, I still see he's getting his uh, ass handed to him. Trump is just saying stupid stuff. To, I mean, he even congratulated Putin for letting oh, no. the go. It was like, I mean, people were like, they were walking out. And then he criticized the school. Well, you know, they only let so many in and that whole section there, they wouldn't let in. That is such bull hockey. <laughs> they didn't They didn't fill them, that's why. Well, I think the school is going to come forward and say, no, that's just simply not true. <laughs> That's, well, that's, that's they did the another event. They had those big flags in front of the empty seats. I'm sorry, say again. There was one. There was one venue where they put these big flags in front of all the empty seats, so you can see it. Well, yeah, I mean, people aren't cooperating with him anymore on his lies <clears> on that. They're they're starting to show the empty the empty rooms, the empty stadiums. As compared to Kamala in Georgia the other night, where it was standing room only, the place was packed to the gills, and every other place I've seen her at since then, same thing, man. I mean, it's like pre Obama run in 08 is like, whoa, <laughs> the energy is palpable. Well, a Trump um, venue is about as empty as his head, so <laughs> you know, I, part of me kind of feel sorry for him because you know I mean my mom had dementia and the last 10 years of her life we took care of her we dealt with her with all the different stages that they go through with dementia and it's truly sad to watch a person get completely robbed of their memories and their abilities and I watch Trump and I'm seeing so many of the same symptoms that my mother had kind of in the same order of them happening, you know, as he slowly gets less and less cognitively able to function. And another part of me is like, why are you feeling sorry for this? <clears throat> because of all the damage he's done and the damage he wants to do if he could somehow magically make it back in. Um I mean, that wars with my uh, better judgments of just trying to be nice to all people. Sometimes it's really hard. <laughs> you know, all of a sudden, he's the Don Old, as Arthur would say. So. Yeah. Well, he's flipping down the drain. I mean, there's no denying. You know? and But the thing is, he was always this mean, nasty person from day one. Oh, yeah. So, you know... It's no surprise what the stuff he's saying. He's just so there's not as much of a filter. Well, a lot yeah, doesn't change the spots, only the tree it climbs up. So, 
True. Yeah. Very true. Very true. And uh, do you guys think JD Vance? Oh, I have a new name for JD Vance, by the way. What is Just it? Just dumb. I, I, I like that. What was it? Just dumb. Just dumb. <laughs> um, is he just dumb or doesn't care? Well, no, he's he's nuts. But the thing is, do you think he's going to get replaced? Yes. I, think, I had a feeling that my guides showed me that they're going to try to force him out. Mm -hmm. Not my guides will force him out, but Trump people no, no. will force him out. But if they do... Then how, I think I'm, they're going to make him an offer he can't refuse. <laughs> well, then what I'm saying with that would be that what would happen is that if he does step down, as I said, the person they'd put in his place would be even worse. And I don't think J.D. Vance would keep his mouth shut about it. I think at some point he'd come out and say, here's what happened. Yeah. You write another book. I'm he'd sorry. be saying it the day after. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> he's but, uh, he's all for the power because from what I've been, the scuttlebutt I've been hearing, and then what I've been picking up when I've thrown cards on it was evidently the plan was to get them in the door. They won. Now Trump is president again. And in the first week, they're going to Article 25 him, Amendment 25, whatever it is. And get rid of him so Vance can step up and be president. And it's like, that is a terrifying thought. Because he is. But he that's hard. That's hard. To do. Do. I don't know. That's really hard to do. Because you need you need the entire cabinet to vote on that. Yeah. I, I, yeah. You don't think like they don't have to have it. Picked. That's why it didn't work the first time around. I don't think they'd do that. I really don't. I mean, well, I could be wrong, but I don't. How do y'all feel about the electors in the um, the election deniers that have managed to get in as the um, the the? I don't even know what the position's called. The ones that that say whether or not they're going to accept the states count to certify the states. Uh, yeah, to cert certify each state. They've got like over 70 of them in counties across the country. My guy say they will get in trouble because it's already, they're not following the will of the people. Well, yeah. they tried that before and it didn't work, but you've got to remember one thing. Kamala Harris is the vice president. So right. she's the one who would certify those electors or their votes. And if she, and if they're fake, there's going to be some kind of, I had said this a long time ago, that Donald Trump, during the last election, would try to mess with the electors to get them to, you know, mm -hmm. to put fake electors in or get them to change their vote or whatever. And and they they thought about doing it, but they didn't. This time, if they try, isn't there a list of who the real electors are? I don't. I, yeah, know. but what, what Sherry is saying, some of the real electors have been named and some of them are election deniers that mm. have been put in so place some of them are yeah. i got it i you know yeah. what? so I, and and somebody and i heard this on i don't know it was midas touch or mary trump's show or one of them they were talking about this the other day and and whoever it was that was the reporter that was on talking about it said yeah but Biden and them are aware of this and they've already got plans in place to deal with them mm -hmm. on election night. So I'm like, oh, thank God they're not sitting on their hands pretending like kumbaya where everything's going to work out fine. They're, 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 oh, no, 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 no. yeah, right. Um, so if they're ready to kick ass, you know, there are already other electors there, and then in some states they said, oh, these people are pretending to be whatever and they're not and they're planted you know I, I see that plot i mean it's it can be very dangerous yes but i don't see them succeeding with that i just I don't, don't even mm -mm. i could be wrong i could be wrong but uh i wasn't I even aware it was an issue until about a week ago 
like I said, when I was watching the, the news show and they were talking about it, and I was like, oh, oh, whoa, hold on. What you're saying is they have actual people that are on the roster to say that they're not going to certify. <laughs> They have no. people that were known election deniers the last go round in 2020, but and many they now managed to get elected in that position to be the ones to make it official. But in many states, it is a law that exactly. whoever the, wins the popular vote of that state, that's how the electors have to cast their ballot. Exactly. Right. right. So, I mean, they could write a Mickey Mouse or Donald Duck. But the, that's an insult to Mickey Mouse or Donald Duck. But so you're saying they put in shit. In other words, they were yeah, they, they have they were appointed for real. But but behind the scenes, it was already understood that they wouldn't certify if, if a Democrat exactly. I got and I yeah. still don't see it happening. Um, they'll try. They will try. But it's going to be uncomfortable. Yeah, they're in place. They're ready to go. That's what I found out about when they were talking about. When they sent them an email with a picture, hold on, hold on. I, I can't hear everybody. So, Sherry, what were you saying? They're in place and what? I don't remember. Go, Arthur. I was just going to say, when they get the email stating, what color jumpsuit would you like? So, oh, they did get that? <laughs> no, I said they will probably. Which jumpsuit color would you like? You know, if you play you want neon pink or neon orange? Because <laughs> I know the horrible sheriff that we had there in Maricopa County in Phoenix area when I lived in Arizona he put prisoners in neon pink jumpsuits and lived in tent cities out in the desert like miles from anything and it was really inhumane treatment because they were out there no ACs no fans no nothing in 120 degree desert heat you know it's, it's like that's just not right well, plus, I mean, the, you know, plus the food they were feeding them was like really bad. It was like, gruel. yeah, it was like part, partly rotted or something it was really bad. Yeah. Um, yeah. Anyway, um, the fake electorate thing, you know, it's, it's something to worry about. Absolutely. But I think by virtue of the fact that the cat's out of that bag and I had predicted that Trump would try to mess with the electors or his cronies, and here we are. You know, Trump tries to do stuff that never can be directly related to him. <laughs> right, it's like a yeah. mob boss. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I just, like I said, I didn't even, I wasn't even aware it was an issue until last week when I heard them talking about it on the news program I was watching. I was like, oh, holy crap, man. <laughs> now I got something else to worry about. And then the other person was like, yeah, yeah. They're aware of what's going on, and they've already got people in place to deal with it. I'm like, okay, I don't have to worry about it. Then they they got it, they they got it hands down. So, um, here's a good question from David Lee. He writes, "Good day, peeps. Will any states that are overwhelming overwhelmingly Republic turn blue? Missouri, Kansas, Oklahoma, Indiana." Um, I see some um, Republican states turning purple. Um, a few might turn blue. You know, I did a show with Linda Grindle this morning. We, you know, Mondays with Linda and Mel, and uh, there's there's a whole list of uh, Republicans that are saying they're going to vote for Kamala, and I think some states will clearly turn purple. Uh, and it's yeah, there was another group that came out this afternoon. And I don't remember what state now, Republicans for, for Harris. I was uh, like, man. <laughs> you know, Linda predicted a long, long, long time ago, and I remember this. Um, I think it was when Biden was first elected, or I don't even remember, it was a long, long time ago, that she said uh, that during Biden's second term, he would step down and Kamala would would pass the baton to Kamala or Kamala. Um, you know, here we are. Yeah. Um, we just were off on the timing. That's all. Yeah. I often, I've been seeing Florida going for uh, Harris. Um, I think they're tired of Abbott. No, no I'm the sorry. No. Yeah. I think they're tired the of the Santa's. To Satan. Uh, 
And I, I keep seeing Florida turning at some point purple a lot sooner than later. Mm -hmm. Once Abbott has gone out of Texas, uh, heads are going to roll down there, too. <laughs> right. Well, I lived in Florida back in the 60s when I was a kid. And um, looking back, it was a fairly blue state at that point. And they had probably one of the top public education systems in the country. Um, they taught on the Montessori system. And their public schools were excellent, bar none. They were better than the private schools. <laughs> and then you started getting all these yahoos in there, tearing it down. And, and, you know, and now, I mean, from the teachers that I know that teach down there, it's a nightmare trying to get anything done. And it's, you know, you're terrified any topics that you bring up or books you want somebody to read, they're going to come down on you for it. So it's about time Florida turns back, gets out of that red nastiness. What are your predictions for the House and the Senate? Um, you know, people are wondering about Georgia, but I think a lot of folks in Georgia are not going to vote for Trump. And I think, um, but I'm talking about, you know, um, when are the, the, well, those senators that were elected, were they elected for three years to finish out somebody's term, or are they going to stay in the full six years for Senate? I don't know. Uh, who is the, about, or, I, will not, I is, think is, they stay Senate. in for the term is finished for the person they replaced. And then they would run on their own if they want to keep the is job. We're not going to send a senator house. I forgot. Um, He's I see Senate. His face. Yeah, I know who you're talking about the two of them. Right. They're in, they're, but they're not up for election right now. Election. I'm sorry. They're not up for election right now. Oh, good. <laughs> so. so what is y'all's take on keeping the House and, and the Senate in this race? I have a lot of I people. Can, I've been getting the same questions, and I've been saying that, well, <laughs> the names that are going to be coming out for indictments for people in the House that may have to go away. And I do feel that the House goes blue for Democrats mm -hmm. and as well with the Senate. There may be a mar the margin may be a little bit thinner in the Senate, but we're just both houses. And I actually feel they may get rid of the filibuster to get things done. I'm sorry, say again. Yeah. I also feel they may get rid of the filibuster to get things done. Okay. Yeah. That's what I see. What about yeah. you? Well, I think the filibuster will still last. They'll just change the rules so it can't be so obstructionist. And I see at some point there's some kind of parliamentarian rules that will be adopted so that, you know, they can't have this obstructionist sort of stuff going on that Mitch McConnell is the one that really started. So I see some of that changing as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I, my feeling is that the Dems will take over the House and the Senate. Yeah. Uh, and I see a bigger lead in the Senate because right now it's razor thin. And as far as the House goes, the way things are going right now with some of these lawsuits and everything, if 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 they decide to put some of Trump stuff on hold, I keep waiting for them to jump over and start tackling some of those in the house that were involved in J6 and start reeling them in. And if they start putting them to court, we may have the house before the election even happens. Granted, it's like what 90 days, 60 days, something like that away, but stranger things have happened. So I see Hakeem Jeffries as speaker of the house. So. I do too. Oh yeah. Without a doubt, without a doubt. And then Johnson said he won't bring this whole thing that Biden talked about with SCOTUS to the it's it's dead on arrival. He won't bring it to the he won't bring it to the floor of the house. But you know, he's not gonna be the speaker long. So once he's gone, uh we shall Well the Dems stepped in and and saved his butt twice when they tried to get rid of him earlier on because he cooperated and worked with the Dems. But the last time he turned around and went out publicly and really said some really unforgivable stuff about the Democratic Party in the House. And I think most of them are now of the mind of, yeah, dude, if they put you up again, don't look at us. You're on your own, you know, so. Well, psychically, at this point, I, you're right. 
go ahead. <laughs> yeah, I, I was just going to say at this point, there's probably a handful of Republicans that have joined the Dems and vote Hakeem in. You know, I just I felt very strongly he was going to be speaker. Well, if they, and it was going to happen before the vote, so or before the I, they I do their stuff. They feel this much that the Dems are not going to save his rear end again. Oh no, no, <laughs> no. He burned that bridge good and proper. And uh, that's what gets me is they burn all these bridges and then they they want to stand there and go, well, I don't understand why you won't support us. I promised you I'd do this and this and this. And you're just like, uh, yeah, and then you lied about it. And you broke your promise. Fool me once, shame on me. Shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. It's my fault at that point. You know, I mean... Um, I know a couple of things that I had looked at here in my state. Uh, our uh, attorney general has filed paperwork with the court to ask the judge to dismiss the lawsuit to do away with the Ten Commandments law. They Wait, are going to fight this tooth and nail. Wait, run this by me again. Say it again. I'm sorry. I didn't hear it all. The we passed here in Louisiana, they passed the Ten Commandments law. What is that? Where every school, K through PhD level, every school has to have the Ten Commandments on the wall in every classroom, in every school, every grade. It doesn't matter. And there's been a really big pushback about that, you know, especially from uh, Jewish groups, Muslim groups. Uh, other denominations and whatnot that that don't believe in the Christian belief, and uh, I mean, and there's even been Christians to fight back against that. It's like, hey, if you want a religious education, go to a private Catholic school or something, not in the public schools. And evidently, there were several of these groups that have filed lawsuits against uh, against the state, asking uh, the the bill to be overturned and our attorney general just the past day or two has now filed whatever kind of decision it is or writ that it is to ask the judge to dismiss the lawsuits trying to overturn the Ten Commandments law and the judge said nope not going to do it <laughs> so uh, that you know, hopefully maybe we can get that law overturned. Of course, <coughs> things go the way I think they're going to go. There's a very good chance that on a federal level, they might be able to come in after the election and do something about that is my hope. I'm not sure when it comes to public wonder. schools, I'm not sure where that line breaks down between state and federal and who's in control what. I wonder how many of those politicians have read them and follow them. I think there should be an 11 with that thou shall not lie. <laughs> well, also part of the problem is the, the way the Ten Commandments, the right they've been written, they're written differently than like you want, you look at the Catholic Bible, the Ten Commandments are written one way. Yeah. Every, they re rewrite them their own way. And this is the Christian nationalist version of the Ten Commandments. Well, yeah. here's, here's my comment on that. Um, you know, I'll, I'll give you a little background. My dad was Protestant. My mom was Catholic. Mm -hmm. My dad was Evangelical Reform United Church of Christ. It's a very liberal Protestant church. But when we turned, I think, 12, we had to start a confirmation class. And we did it for two years, every Friday, for three hours. And we started with the Old Testament, and we it went through the entire Bible, read it from cover to cover. So when people quote the Bible and they misquote them, like, uh-uh. My mother was Catholic, so then we had to take catechisms and do all that stuff. So I did both. <laughs> you know, the Ten Commandments really are the same, seriously, for Catholics and for they might their wording might be a little, but it's the same. The wording is different, yeah. But but, but here's what well it depends on the interpret it depends on the uh, edition of the Bible. 
like if you read the the living edition the modern one you know the the king james they used almost shakespearean english it's not old english or middle east it's shakespearean that's why they do vowel and vowels and all that stuff but anyway okay but i want to touch here really quickly on the ninth commandment and that one is you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor mm -hmm. now that commandment principle includes all forms of lying <laughs> right so well, that lets the republicans out <laughs> and gossip <laughs> and gossip and saying things that aren't true uh, malingering somebody i mean not malingering maligning it's a hoax right so there you go um and just for the record in the bible jesus talks about satan as the father of all lies yeah so, um, jesus also said i am the fulfillment of the law it's no longer you don't have to go back to the old testament to follow all the laws of the old testament if you believe in jesus then you're covered that's how he put it, whatever version of the Christian Bible you want to read. And so it's like, okay, if you're going to claim you're a Christian, but you want to go back to the Old Testament, so what, you're going to be Jewish now? And you're going to follow Jewish law? Because that's what they follow, is the Old Testament, not the New Testament. <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying, you know, when I was in high school, I used to go to temple with a friend who was Jewish. And then on Sunday, we'd go to mass with my other friend, to the Catholic Church. I figured, hey, I'm getting the old and the new, getting a well-rounded education in this, right? Well, so the, the, Torah, <laughs> the Torah is the first five books of the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, right. so the Deuteronomy, Canonicals, and all of that. But then there's other things. But um, the ninth, back to the ninth testament. Here's where I'm going with this. It says the ninth commandment. I'm not testament commandment prohibits making false statements against our neighbor false statements so when trump and they all make those lies hmm there's one they're breaking <laughs> shall we go for more so when they oh let's let's go for some more so when they <laughs> so when they put are try to force that in every classroom wall. They're being hypocrite because they're the mm -hmm. first ones to break the Ten Commandments. How about this one? Preventing perjury, slander, and perversion of justice. Okay. Well, so they're guilty of that too. <laughs> so that's about the ninth commandment. Thou shall not thou thou shall not bear false witness mm -hmm. against thy neighbor. So you know, we can go on and on and on. Um, you know, there's things in the Bible that says lying lips are an abomination unto the Lord. So if they want to get religious, there are people like the Donald Trumps <coughs> and some of those MAGA supposed ultra-right ring Christian nationals need to practice what the hell they're preaching. Right? Yeah. And if you want to live in that kind of society, go the hell to Iran. You That's know, how they live. You know, they're just following a different set of books. People have the right the to same have thing. Their, people have the right to have their religion. And I that's fine with me. I don't have a problem with that. But when they start trying to cram it down other people's throats and using that as a way to manipulate others to get votes and all of this and all of that, you know, like this whole thing, you gotta have the Ten Commandments in the classroom. Well, excuse me, schools, you know, what What about the ch separation of church and state? Well, that's, uh, yeah. Schools are public, all right? Yeah. So if you're going to put the Ten Commandments up, okay, then how about having the Torah? And how about having the Bhagavad Gita? And how about having the Quran? How about having all of those available? Yeah, now, if you're going to put one, you got to put them all now, if you in my book. If you said that to those politicians, they would have a conniption fit. So at oh, some okay. point, if they this is going to go to the Supreme Court. And at some point, I see another court, not this court, but at some point, a court saying, no, mm -mm, 
you know, if people want to bring them into the classroom for their own personal whatever, that's fine. But you can have a moment of silence in school, but you can't enforce the prayer thing. You can't do any of that. Mm-hmm. And that's not a going against people's freedom of religion. It's just saying that you have to be fair to everybody. Right. And what they're saying in Louisiana, whoever did that, is that it's a bunch of bigots trying to force their religious belief down everybody else's throat. It's our MAGA governor, our MAGA house, and our MAGA well, senator. Well, governor who's not a governor who obviously is not following the Ten Commandments. No, not, not even close. And and there was, Arthur and I were talking about it backstage. There was a, another article that came out today. I wasn't even aware it was an issue here in my own state. That's how well they keep things buttoned up till it busts out. Um, evidently, the new governor, uh, Governor Landry, and his administration has been refusing over a quarter of all requests for public records from the press and whatnot who were trying to verify stories, verify information, that kind of thing. And um, from what I was reading, it's not just people who are Democrats or independents that are getting pissed off about it. It's the Republicans too, because they're getting denied just as much as anybody else. And so, I mean, our governor now was our former attorney, attorney general. And in 2020, he was one of the first ones to hop on the stop the steal nonsense and sign off on it. In my book, that should have disqualified him from even running for governor, much less becoming governor. But that election, we had the worst turnout in the state that we've had in decades. Nobody showed up to vote. Everybody thought, no, he's not going to win. He's too crazy. Well, nobody but his people showed up and voted. So guess who won? And it's been a fight since day one. I mean, he refused the federal bill that um, the school lunch bill for kids that provides a free hot meal to every child in school, whether if it's in the summertime when school's out or not, completely 100% paid for by the federal government. Biden got that passed, not just as under a... Uh, um, presidential thing, but he actually got it signed off in Congress as a bill. And our new governor, the only thing the states have been asked to pay is to cover half the cost of the administrative costs to run the program. Everything else is covered by the federal government 100%. Everybody loves it. Rich kids, poor kids, doesn't matter because everybody gets to eat and nobody has to worry about how much money they got in their pocket. And kids aren't having to sit in the cafeteria and go hungry while their friends are eating because their mama is working three jobs and doesn't have lunch money for, to give them. And uh, he turned that down. It, that was a bridge too far for him. Oh, no, we can't have that. That's that's communism. That's whatever name he wanted to tack on to it. I mean, it was like, are you nuts? So and what, you're gonna stand there and tell me you're this big Christian and you're you're uh family first and you love children and da 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 but you're gonna make damn sure all those kids go hungry and you don't give a shit. Pardon my French, but that's how I feel about it. It so, infuriated me when I found out that happened. So the lesson is everybody must get out vote. and vote. 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 And no matter who, vote blue. Vote blue. <laughs> Arthur, we're doing good tonight, honey. We've been in sync. <laughs> but also, well, I mean, what he's denying is it's called the Freedom of Freedom of Information Act. Yeah, right. And there were times when I was working as a reporter where I would have a clerk not want to give me records or give me information, and all I would say is, "Under the Freedom of Information Act," and that was handed to me. Yeah, that was a lawsuit. Of- they didn't hit, That's they what they're denying are these Freedom of Information Act requests that are coming into the government for from like reporters and I, I guess attorneys, whatever. I don't know who all's behind it. And they're refusing over a quarter of them coming in. Yeah, well, it's, it's I'm just saying law. that. Right. I, and and they, they, they operate like 
federal schmetteral. Who cares? I said, no. I mean, Abbott does the same thing in Texas. <clears throat> Santos does the same thing in Florida. There are other uh, red, red, white, right wing governors in other states that do the same damn thing. It's like, okay, somebody's got to quit playing chicken with these people and just flat plant your ass right in front of them and said, and say that's against the law. And if you continue, you're going to go to jail. I'm just saying, if it was me obstructing justice that way, they would put my ass in jail. I can guarantee you. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm cursing up a storm. That I got pissed. Um, <laughs> I'll, yeah, but it's all the blue states to keep the red states afloat. That's right. That's right. The red states, we would not survive without all the money that the blue states pay you. And uh, so, I mean, they tend to want to overlook that fact. It looks like they Mel wants to say lot. something. You know, I think, I'm sorry, Arthur, go ahead. No, I said, it looks like Mel wants to say something. Well, <laughs> I think Mel always wants to say something. I, I, I think the problem, well, it's not a problem. Uh, you know, the Tea Party people and, and then the MAGAs and all these, they talked about, you know, the, the Democrats, they're communists, they're taking away our freedom, blah, blah, blah. But yet the MAGAs are the first ones to take away people's freedom. A woman can't have an abortion. They took away her freedom to her body under the guise of the unborn child's freedom. Oh, they talk about, you know, they don't want abortion, but yet when that child is born, they don't want to appropriate the money to take care of it. They don't want to feed the kids in school. They don't want to be. So what is the bigger sin here? And now they're trying to pass laws to end contraception. And well, you don't have a right to take contraception oh, or to use not, a rubber. But hold on. They're not going to, but they're, they're not going to pass laws to ban Viagra. Well, if you want to, if you want to ban contraception, then ban Viagra. Cause guess what? Without a guy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Let's put it where it belongs. The number one top 100% guaranteed cause of pregnancy is MEN. <laughs> So let's and without MEN, it doesn't happen. So let's put it where unless you, yeah. So, um, the, the, you know, so essentially that very group that's talking about giving us more freedom is taking away away. so many yeah. of our freedoms. And they call themselves the Freedom Caucus, take away the Freedom Caucus. So, exactly. So, but you know what? People are getting tired of it. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. it's like they want to take us back 70 years and that's not going to happen. Mm -mm. Uh, the only reason Trump, Trump doesn't give a one flying hoot about the, the constituents. He doesn't care about the MAGAs. All he mm -hmm. wants to do is stay in power so he can manipulate. And, you know, so he's got to get out of jail free ticket. He doesn't give a a shit about the people that that or something you know, about his base. He doesn't. He doesn't. No, care. not at all. He doesn't care about anybody. If if the Democrats said we'll support Trump, we love Trump, that'll never happen. But if they did, he would change horses in the middle of the stream in a nanosecond. He has no loyalty to anyone, and only to himself. Yes. To Donald and anybody who's ever been around him for any length of time who's tasted that Kool Aid has found it out, and that's exactly what he will do. Just as Hitler at the end of the war <coughs> back on the German people, that's exactly what Donald yeah. Trump do. You yeah. mark my words, and it's happening already. Humpty Dumpty is starting to take his great fall, and those people. That those MAGAs, just like after the war in, in World War II, yeah. a lot of the people in those villages that uh, that were Nazi supporters, oh, what the, they we were not Nazi supporters. Oh no, they all crawled back in the woodwork, and that's exactly what's going to happen after Trump is off the stage. Some you know, one of the smartest know. things that Germany did at that time was when it came time to do the cleanup of all of those death camps and everything, they went to those local villages. 
and said, uh, this is your job. You get to go clean this up. And they made them face what it is they ignored for so long. And I think that's been some of the issue with our country. But, but on, is on, with on, all the atrocities that we ourselves have committed against Native Americans, against African Americans, against Asian Americans throughout the years, we've never had to seriously look it in the mirror and face up to it. Well, on behalf of the German people, they've gotten beyond that. Thank oh, God. yeah. But but there were many courageous German people that hit Jewish families and that, that helped gay yeah. people and helped Jehovah's Witnesses and mm -hmm. helped Romani, which was uh, the derogatory term is gypsy. Mm -hmm. um, not all Germans were bad. And many of them did not know what was going on. Right. And, and so... You know, what they should have done was taken the Hitler supporters and shown them that stuff. Uh, you know, uh, just like here in this country, many of us do not like Donald Trump or what he represents. OK, do we share in the collective guilt if he's elected? Absolutely. But there are many of us speaking up that we are tired of this. We don't yeah. want to. America. This is not America. Donald Trump is not America. And we won't have it. And that's exactly what Kamala is saying. And that's exactly right. We're not going backwards. Correct. Yeah. So I'm, I'm on my bandwagon tonight, but uh, <laughs> uh, I should, you know, but psychically, I, I feel that, um, you know, um, We've all been saying it. Trump's downfall will happen. I mean, the Teflon is wearing off, and there's going to be a lot more explosive things that are come up, going to get, come out about him in the next two, three, four, five weeks. Now he's going to try to bring out some stuff against Kamala, and it looks like he might score a few wins, but he won't win the war. He's going back to his old rhetoric about blaming everybody else for the crap he has pulled, and it's getting old. It's not working. When they tried to bring out that Kamala Harris's husband had an affair, it's like, and, and, well, okay, that's that's my point about the hypocrisy. Yeah. But how many has Donald Trump had? Look at the whole Stormy Daniels trial where he was convicted of thirty-four felony counts. Yeah. <laughs> they talked. It about wasn't. Like it that. wasn't an affair when he was married to her or to his first wife. But let's just you know let's, let's just take it from here. The way they need to counter that is our candidate has not been convicted of 34 felony counts. No, she's convicted our people of it. not being she's the one that's brought them put them in prison for doing that. So yeah, we have the been, good guys. Our candidate has not been indicted in two state courts and two federal courts. Yeah. Our candidate and impeached twice. <laughs> correct. So that's, I think they're going to strike back with that. And I think that, you know, Kamala's going to also focus on the facts. You know, here's yeah. what we've done under Joe Biden. Here's what we plan to do. Here's what we're, we're, we want to do. That's why she's so good at her rallies is because she gets right. in, she, she gets everybody hyped up. She gets her points across and she's done in under 30 minutes. Boom. She's out of there. Right. She comes in, she hits and she goes. She doesn't take two, three hours and rambles on and on and on. I mean, <laughs> oh, that's, that's pretty Trump. exciting. You know, right. she gets people, they're, they're ready to go. So um, I don't know if I want to be electrocuted or eaten by a shark, though. Or, no, an electric shark. Oh, okay. You have to, an electric shark. <laughs> we, do we have time for one more? I got to run because I got more things I got to do. So I'm we're pretty much done. I don't have any more questions. Yeah. 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 So if y'all are good, then we're good to go. And um, we our normal time to come back. Uh, Mel and I would be on the 26th of the month. And. It looks like you'll be here. We'll play that by we'll see how it goes just in case something happens and you leave earlier than normal but and Arthur will be with Marina on that night so uh 
but um, we'll uh, we'll we'll get somebody to come in and fill his. And by then, we'll know who the VP shoes. is. Yeah, how about that? <laughs> well, no, wait, Arthur, tomorrow night, am I on your channel? You on mine? I forgot. I, I think you're I'm on mine. Okay, you're on mine. You're on yours, and I'll be there to run background. There so. you go. Launches come on with us live, and you can work background. <laughs> no, whatever y'all want, I don't care. All right, <laughs> I'm there to run the background. Right. You want me on work. camera? I'll be on camera. Right. Just give me warnings or I can put on makeup. So. Thanks for stopping by, everyone. <laughs> Right. Thank tomorrow you, everybody. Y'all have a wonderful uh, evening. Tomorrow night, 6.30, right, Arthur? Whatever time you want. 6.30. Okay. Okay. There you go. Bye, y'all. <laughs>